some of you say to me, well, I'm not like you. I'm, I'm not a congressman. I haven't got education. I haven't got money. But you're a human being. And you know what you've got? You've got in your hand the power to use your vote and to use even those few cents you get from SNAP and welfare and spend them only where you want to spend them. So look at that. A young slave boy stood one day before the greatest ruler of his day. And God said to Moses, what's in your hand? And Moses said, I've only a stick in my hand, that's all. And God said, well, let me use what's in your hand. And God used that slave boy with a stick in his hand to divide the Red Sea, to march his people through a wilderness, to bring water from rock and manna from heaven and lead his people to freedom in it. What's in your hand? What's in your hand? Consider George Washington Carver, who was so frail that he was traded for a broken down horse as a slave boy. And George Washington Carver told me, while sitting in the science laboratory at Tuskegee, he said, Dr. Powell, I just get up at five o'clock every morning and I go out in the fields and I let God guide me and I bring back these little things and I work them over in my laboratory. And that man, did more to revolutionize the agricultural science of peanuts, of cotton, and of sweet potatoes than any other human being in the field of agricultural science. What's in your hand? Just let God use you, that's all. What's in your hand? I've got a string in my hand, and I'm flying a kite. And way up in the heavens, lightning strikes it. And I, Benjamin Franklin, discover for the first time the possibilities of electricity with a string in my hand. What's in your hand? What's in your hand, little hunchback, sitting in a Roman jail? I've got nothing in my hand but an old quill pen. And God says, well, write what I tell you to write. And Paul wrote, I've run my race with patience. I've finished my course. I've kept the faith. What's in your hand, little slave boy? I haven't got anything in my hand but a slingshot. And the enemies of my people are great and big and more numerous than we are. Well, little David, just go on down to the brook and gather a few stones and come on back and close your eyes if you want to and let it go. And David killed the giant and the enemies of his people, and his people became free just by letting God guide a stone in his hand. And a few years later, David is a king. And God said, what's in your hand? And David said, I've only a harp in my hand. And God said, well, write what I tell you to write. Play what I tell you to play on your harp. And David played. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. What's in your hand? What's in your hand? Man hanging on the cross, I've got two nails in my hand. Father, you're the only help I know. If thou forsake me, whither will I go? And that man, with two nails in his hand, split history in half. B.C. And A.D. And what's in your hand tonight? you got God in your hand. And he'll let you win because he's on your side. Because one with God is always in the majority. So walk with him and talk with him and fight with him and stick together and pray together. And the victory will be accomplished here sooner than you think. Sooner than you prayed for, sooner than you hoped for, sooner than you imagined, good night and God bless you.